Hi, this is the Body and X from the Candid Frame. One of the things that I'm really grateful for is is keywording. Back in the days when I worked at the magazines and we would get all these digital files, not only the ones that I produced, but from photographers that were submitting stuff for articles, is I had to create all these folders and subfolders in this traditional Windows directory. And then when I wanted to find an image, I had to figure out, okay, what folder did I put this in? And I would have to spend all this time trying to go through, through folders. And because I was there for several years, sometimes I'd have to remember, was it 2010? Was it 2008? 2007? And there was just a lot of time just wasted searching for particular images. And when applications like Photoshop and particularly Lightroom started incorporating keywords, it suddenly made life really easy for me. Um, one of the drawbacks, though, is that all these legacy images I had um, that I'd been importing into my into my computers didn't have the the benefit of being keyworded. So I had to sort of go back and sometimes I would keyword some of those older images and some of them so still largely unkeyworded, making it a little more difficult to actually search for those images when I when I need to and then I have to fall back into that old, okay, what year did I take it in and, and so on and so forth. So what I do now on a regular basis though is I apply keywords on import and then after I've made my initial selects and I just want to really briefly walk you through what I do here. Um, it's, it's, it saves me a lot of time. It saves me an incredible amount of time to be able to do the keywording because later on when I need a particular image, all I need to do is just type in a search word and just say, I want an image of um, people, uh, beach, uh, bathing suits, uh, volleyball. And I can just punch in those words and only those images that have those specific keywords will show up. And whether you only have hundreds or you have tens of thousands of images on your computer, it's amazing how much time you can save yourself when you know that you're looking for an exact uh, specific image. But it, it calls on you to be pretty dutiful in terms of keywording your images as they as they come in. Now, one of the ways I, I typically do it is in, in two phases. The first time is when I'm importing, importing the images. Now, here are some images that I made during a performance of uh, magician Ben Kemper down here in Los Angeles. And what, uh, what I'll do is when I see these images that I know are, are of a singular shoot, there may be some differences in, in some of the shots. There's some with him just in the shots. Uh, there's sometimes when he has a, a, a guest come up to help him with the, uh, with the magic act or he may be using cards or scarves or an egg, all those different things I might want to keyword. But right now what I want to do is just apply keywords that apply to the entire shoot. And when I'm importing the images, here you have the, the, the source from which the images are. Here you have thumbnails of all the images that are on the memory card. And then over here you have all the attributes that you can apply to the image from file handling, file renaming, where it's going to be uh, uh, loaded. But it's the section right here that I'm going to concern myself, which is apply during import. And you can see here, uh, as well as the metadata, which includes my copyright information, there's information here for keywording. And what I'll apply here for the keywords are keywords that will are appropriate for every shot that's in the series. So I'll type in magic, magician, and because I've typed in the word magician before, all I, it will show up on the screen there. And I can just use the cursor key to select that and choose that. And then it's uh, performance. It's a performer. Uh, it's a stage. Uh, what else can I include? It's um, tricks. Sleight of hand. Uh He's in all the shots, so I can include man. I could actually put in his name, Ben Kemper. So you get the idea. Is I'm, I'm, I'm taking a look at these images, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's all the things that I could put in there? He's wearing a hat in all these, so I can put in hat, uh, suit, tie. Some of these things might not seem particularly important, but you never know when you have to find a particular image, and, and having even something as innocuous as the word tie and hat might make a difference when you're trying to do a search 
especially if you have tens of thousands of images. So once I've applied all these general keywords, and I'm happy that it's sort of it's it it's reflective of all the images there, I will go ahead and click import. And when the images are imported into the hard drive, all of those images will have those keywords. Okay, I've already imported those images from a previous session, so I'm not going to do it again. But here's another series of images from, from Italy, and I want to show you that once I've imported those, those images, you can see right here, and we can go to keywording. And you can see here, I already had some general keywords in here that said Europe, international, Italy, personal, travel, vacation, because I had such diversity of imagery in my catalog uh, from from the, the weeks that I spent there, I couldn't be as specific with the uh, with the keywords as I might have wanted to. But instead of keywording all those in individual photos that I imported from my compact flashcards, there are certain images in there I'm I'm never going to look at again, and they're not going to be edited. So what I tend to do is I wait until I fl have flagged my images from my initial pick, and then I've chosen. Uh, and rated the one-star images, which are images that I'm considering incorporating in a slideshow or possibly working with. These are the images that are more likely going to be used in some form in, in the future. So these are the ones where I'm going to start applying um, more keywords. As you'll see, you can end up spending a lot of time uh, applying these additional keywords after you've downloaded the images and I feel feel like it's a really a, a waste of effort to have to keyword every single photograph that you've made especially if it's an image that more than likely is not going to be used for any any particular purpose if you're shooting stock maybe maybe there's some justification for it but for me um, I know that the way I use my images I don't need to be spending that kind of time keywording each and every photograph so here I have this image selected here and I can simply start looking at the photographs and go okay what else is here well I have a statue uh, there are trees it's a courtyard um, you got blue sky and that about encapsulates it here then I'll move over to the to the next image here and this has This has Europe International, just the very same words as the other ones, but now I'm going to add some more things. So I have a, I have a door, I have a shadow, I have an arch, um, I have a floor here. Then I'll click over here to the next image. This has a carousel. It has horses. It's again the courtyard from before because I've typed in that courtyard, it will appear so I don't have to type in the entire word. There is a person there, so I can write people even though it's not a real dominant part of, uh, of the shot. There's a building or apartments in the back. I can put buildings. Move on to the next one. Here I have window. I have graffiti. I have okay windows, graffiti. I have peeling paint. There's a lot of peeling paint in some of these shots. So you, you can see that that I start just adding all those little details, those descriptions for all the images that I'm seeing there. Like one of the things that I noticed in in going through these images is that I have a lot of images of of doors, and I can just you know start adding that to doors. So I got door here. I have a door in this shot. And I have a door in this shot. So now if I wanted to do a, a search for just images of, uh, of doors in Italy, what I can do is I can just type Italy door. And all those images that have been keyworded with Italy and door will appear on the screen. So this is where the power of the keywords really helps you because instead of having to go through all those thousands of images that I took looking for Italian doors, 
I can just type in those two keywords and they'll come up. If I wanted to say, I could have added other keywords to be even more specific. I could say wooden, I could say green, I could say red, and all those attributes would refine the search and make it narrower and narrower. So now when I have to search for an image for an article that I'm doing or because I want to include it in the slideshow, I just need to type in the keyword and those images instantly pop up. I no longer have to go through all these folders or subfolders or try to figure out exactly where I put that image in order to access this. And this was would have been invaluable to me during the many years that I was at the magazine, but it was all that wasted time sitting there in front of a computer doing it the old fashioned way that has made me a real proponent about using keywording when you're importing um, to just save yourself time and to just make you much more efficient in terms of accessing your images. So I hope you found this helpful. If you like what you're seeing with these videos, please write a review and please subscribe. And if you're curious about what we do at The Candid Frame, you can visit our website at thecandidframe.com where we have a lot of resources, including great interviews with some of the best photographers from all over the world, as well as other tutorials, uh, reviews, and other content. So take care and see you soon.